some of these kids that are coming out, they're coming out and they've got that whole book of diagnosis and labels. And it, it comes across as like, this is what's wrong with my child. And you're like, no, they're, no. <laughs> I'm gonna show you why your child is truly a remarkable person. Hello, welcome to another episode of Bunny Hugs and Mental Health, the podcast for anyone with a brain or emotions. I'm your host, Todd Rennebaum. What a wonderful episode we have this week. I say that every week and I mean it every week. This week I'm speaking with Stephanie Lockhart and she is a therapist, an, an equine therapist, I believe is her title. Basically, she's a therapist, mostly for youth, and uh, she uses horsies in her therapy sessions. Uh, she does not give therapy to horses, but she uses the horses as a tool to help the youth, often even their parents in the therapy sessions. So if you've tried all types of other therapies, you may want to listen to this episode and get a good idea of what it's like working with horses, especially if you have youth who are maybe needing it and just learn a little more about the, what, what that therapy looks like. Uh, her, her ranch is called Success Ranch. She's pretty much one of the only equine therapists in the province, to be honest with you. So we've got that coming up. I also want to say congratulations to Tyson Williams. Tyson won $25 gift card from Co-op for answering the trivia question last week. Uh, so congratulations to him. Stay tuned for the end of the episode for another question. You can have the chance to win $25 gift card from Co-op as well. But make sure you listen to the episode carefully because the answer will be in the episode. Next week, I have an incredible guest. Her name is Angela. And she was on the television show, The Rehearsal. Uh, if you've ever heard of Nathan Fielder or Nathan for me, he's a, a, an amazing comedian and comedic kind of reality-ish television show producer. Uh, his newest show is called The Rehearsal. And Angela was a major feature on, on that show. And we're going to talk to her about being in recovery of addictions and also just w what it was like being on the show because... Not everyone has positive experiences being on reality TV, uh, as she did struggle a bit afterwards. So, uh, yeah, w listen to that one next week. Come join the Bunny Hugs and Mental Health Podcast community on social media. On Instagram, it's Bunny Hugs Podcast. And on Facebook, I've created a new group called Bunny Hugs and Mental Health Community. And in both of them, uh, you can we talk about the podcast. We could talk about guests. You could talk about whatever you want and on the facebook one you can actually post your own articles and your own stories and your own feelings about things so uh yeah come join those and be sure to tell others about them and about the podcast this is a free mental health podcast and basically a free mental health service so if you are struggling and you know other people that are struggling or you, you want someone else who maybe isn't struggling but they have a loved one that's struggling and you want them to help understand what they're going through be sure to share this podcast. Okay, anyway, enough of that stuff. Without further ado, I give you Stephanie Lockhart. Jackson being one of our, like one of my horses here, mm -hmm. the reason he's so appealing is because he's big and he's black and everybody just loves a big black horse. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's... it's 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 eye appealing. It's you kind of get drawn into it, right? <laughs> I don't know, but Jackson Jackson's kind of our, it's kind of a star. So she came out, did this film. It um, she released it this January February ish, winter, and I said I was like, I want to do that, but with the work I do. And so second time around. I approached her in a sense saying, here, let's build this because I really think that um, programs like equine assisted psychotherapy need to be more mainstream. Not so much saying, hey, come to my arena and work with me. But if, you know, talk therapy isn't working, we need to start reaching out for other things. Um, again, kind of breaking some of those molds. So that was my whole push behind it was, well, no, just get it out there because there are other arenas that do very similar work. Um, but a lot of them are, I'm going to say a lot are Alberta, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's horse country out there. It's cowboy country. Yeah, It's a completely different culture, you know, one province over. 
Um, there's some phenomenal programs that are happening down in the States. Um, but again, it, it's not here. Right. And that's where I'm going like, no, like this needs to be everywhere. It's not something that should be isolated to one province or, um, you know, one, one state down South or wherever it is. Programs like this need to be more readily available for families. Mm -hmm. So that was my kind of big push to calling up Jenna this spring going, Hey, yeah, we're going to do this. I don't know when, I don't know how you just show up. I'll have my, you know, families that are in agreement to doing this, that are excited to do this. Um, mm. And yeah, the rest just kind of fell into place. And now, like I say, I, I'm kind of like, okay, that, that project's done. I'm ready to go back to work. And she's like, hey, well, we're going to hit 10,000 <laughs> views. We're going to hit 100,000 views. It's going to go viral. And I'm like, okay, that's your baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, it's in your hands. I can't now. do that no more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wrote a kid's book a while ago and it was like, <laughs> just finishing the kid's book. I was like, ah, oh, it's done. And the people are like, what are you talking about? No, now you have to promote it and do all this stuff. And right? I'm like, oh, that's not fun for me. That's, no. <laughs> I don't get dopamine from that. That's why I hired you. <laughs> <laughs> you promote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I have to tell you, I am deathly afraid of horses. I, a uh, t- couple times when I was, once when I was like, I don't know, 13 or 12 or something like that. Uh, my my buddy lived on a farm. He's like, hey, let's go ride the horses. So we jumped on the horse and whoo, I got woo, bucked off and landed yep. on my head. And yep. then uh, <laughs> when I was about 18 or 19, my girlfriend was like, come ride my horse. And <laughs> it just hurt. I, the horse didn't listen. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. It was like the longest hour and a half of my life. Um, would, would this therapy help me still, even though I'm afraid, I'm not afraid of horses. I just don't like things bigger and smarter than me. (laughs) So I'm kind of chuckling because truthfully, some of my favorite people to work with are the ones who will straight up and say, horses scare me. I don't like them. And it it is because, well, and what I've noticed too, just with talking with um, more so the parents or the caregivers. So a lot of my work is focused with our kids most, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of our kids are pretty fearless. You know, they're coming in, they've got a whole shit ton of stuff going on, but they're coming in and like, I can take this horse and I can make him do what I want. They soon find out they're wrong. And the horse is like, no, <laughs> we can do it, but you're going to have to change your attitude just a little bit. Yeah. On my terms. <laughs> on my, Yeah. Um. So then the adults that come out, they're like, usually the people going, Nope, I'm not going in there. You can take my kids. You, I trust you. You go do your thing. And it's always like, well, okay, so why? What What is it that has you sitting on the other side of the fence? And a lot of the experiences that, you know, some of the adults I work with kind of boil down to a very similar story that you have. I've had a really bad experience with it. Um, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, you know, I was at this place, I got kicked in the head, I fell off, I got stepped on, I, all of these, you know, traumas in a sense that actually cause a lot of pain. And then you come back 25 years later and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, do- I'm doing that. And it's like, oh, yeah, you are. I'll get you there. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get you there. Um, but what it is, it is really kind of rebuilding that safety and that security piece. Because we have we have that really intense memory. You know, you mentioned you got bucked off. Nobody likes getting bucked off. Even, you know, some of the folks that I know um, that ride and train professionally, that's their full-time business. They're good at what they do with these horses. And they say, too, they're like, yeah, sometimes you get bucked off. You, you don't like it. And oh, these I think are a horse also- bit me once, too. I was trying to feed oh, it an yeah. apple as a little kid in it. Yeah. I didn't move my hand fast enough or something. Sorry. You know, and no, that's okay. I that's the thing. Like all of these things as adults, that all gets, you know, ingrained into us. And we're like, okay, can't do it because yes, I'm gonna get bit, I'm gonna get kicked. Um, we automatically associate this great big 1200 pound animal with fear and pain because that's all we've experienced. Mm-hmm. We've never had that opportunity to experience something different. Our kids, on the other hand, like I say, not not all of them, um, but lots come in. They're 
usually the first few sessions kind of nervous because again, it's like, here's this 1200 pound horse. How, how, what am I, how, what? It's like, you just kind of stand in awe if you haven't grown up in that lifestyle. Plus the parents kinda, who are, you know, yeah. biased a little bit may have put something yeah. in their head too. You know, that's, that's the thing. Like these kids are coming in and yeah, they're maybe in awe, maybe a little bit nervous, maybe a little bit anxious, but they quickly come around and like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, Prince, Prince is good. Prince isn't going to hurt me. And then they go, Prince is really lazy. Prince is really stubborn. And <laughs> that's where I say, that's where the learning starts going. Okay. So how can you get Prince to be a partner with you? How are you going to, what are you going to do to encourage him to want to work with you? Mm -hmm. So then all of this stuff starts happening. We take it back to the people world. And again, I'm still talking our kiddos. I'll come back to the adults in a second here, but we take it back to the people world going, okay, so you and your sister, you know, maybe we're not getting along very well. What can you do that's going to encourage your sister to want to work with you, to want to play, to want to be there without all of the squabbling? Um, so we do a lot of back and forth that if it's working with the horse, how can we, how can we work it with a person? Kind of a nutshell really as to how a lot of this works with our adults who are scared, terrified, nervous, anxious. Um, oftentimes I kind of say, you know, come into the arena when you're ready. I'm not going to force you to be here. And then I'll just start letting horses loose or, you know, we'll bring the horses over. And, and it's funny because they'll go from, holy crap, this is like really intense to, oh, yeah, no, Prince, Prince is pretty chill. Um, this is, this is okay. Uh, and then, you know, kind of having their own sense of kind of overcoming their own fears on mm -hmm. their terms, starting to, again, learn that, well, okay, not all horses are bad. Not all horses are going to bite you. Not all horses are going to, you know, buck you off. And I kind of like, I like to relate that to dogs. People know dogs, right? I love dogs. I love dogs. Every, like, I don't know a person yet where I can say, hey, do you know a dog? Have you had a dog in your life? And it's always like, yeah, I don't have a dog, but my cousin has a dog or my neighbor or whatever. It, dogs are easier to connect with because they're very popular. But again, going back to, say, a traumatic experience where you get bit by a dog, well, okay, it doesn't mean all dogs are going to bite you. But you had that experience where it's like, okay, you know, I had this, um, I had this big dog bite me, I had a little dog bite me, whatever it was. Well, now we have that fear, like, you're, you're really cautious, you know, next time you see a dog. Because again, there was that pain that was associated with it. It's kind of the same with the horses. So then is it the same with people? It's like, oh, I'm afraid of so. people or I'm isolating or I, yeah. I have social anxiety. And it's like, yeah. oh, not everybody's a, an abuser or a manipulator. Yeah. Or, and know. that's, you know, that's exactly it. Because we kind of, again, with traumas and whatnot or, you know, experiences, we really hang on to those bad experiences. I don't know what it is about the human brain, but we hang on to the bad stuff and we forget about the good stuff. So whether it, people, we hang on to those bad experiences we've had with people, but it doesn't mean that we've never had good experiences because um, there, there is, there is a lot of really great people out there. Um, we just have to start kind of putting those bad experiences off to the side and be like, oh, okay, how do I start? How do I start bringing those good experiences back again? Putting ourselves out there. How is it different with adults, uh, this type of therapy, yeah. as opposed to children? Like, uh, is it, okay. do you use it for different diagnoses or is it? So, okay. So this might be long winded and I apologize in advance. Okay. Um, we have an hour at least. <laughs> Not at least, but yeah. Uh, so for starters, um, the word diagnosis, diagnoses, whatever we want to call it, um, I refuse to, so I don't want to say I don't acknowledge, you know, stuff that people have going on. But what frustrates me is when I have parents, caregivers, social workers, um, doesn't matter, but they'll say, well, my child's 
Uh, my child has uh, autism. Okay, that's great. And no, I, I want to meet your child. And let's see how amazing your child actually is. Um, so I really, really, really try to avoid labels. Um, hmm. you know, a lot of kids will come in and, uh, you know, anxiety, anxiety is like at the forefront of everything we talk about. It seems these days, mm -hmm. um, well, it's you know, a very and, common symptom of many diagnoses. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's the thing, you know, I, I do kind of believe too, where it's like, well, we all have anxiety. We just have to figure out how to deal with it. Right. We all have stress, but how are we going to deal with it when, you know, something's a little more intense? For example, let's say, uh, you know what? I just got fired from my job. Yeah, I'm going to be stressed. Like probably a lot. But what do you do about it? You know, we can deal with it in a sense like, okay, so that didn't work out. How can I keep moving forward? Or we kind of deal with that stress going yeah, this isn't good. And we kind of spiral downwards. But the stress is still there. That stress hasn't changed. It's how right. we deal with it. Um, so with anxiety, a lot of the kiddos that I work with, um, everybody, like, I, I keep hearing, oh, they have anxiety. Oh, they have social anxiety. They have this anxiety, that anxiety. And I'm like, no, they they have a great personality and we just got to figure out how to bring out some of their, you know, some of their strengths again. So I, I do, I really try to avoid labels Even because PTSD? I PTSD. Yeah. I, I avoid it. Okay. I do. Um, I'm not saying I don't acknowledge it. Right. Um, you know, again, yeah, there's, there's definitely stuff going on. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, so kids specifically, I do a lot of work with uh, trauma, trauma-based, you know, experiences, work, uh, whatever that is. Um, so these kids that are coming out, there's a lot of behavioral challenges. There's a lot of stuff that no child should ever have to experience, but they live it. And it's a case of like, okay, no, I, I hear you, dude. Um, let's move forward. How can we make today a better day? than what it was yesterday. How can we plan to make tomorrow a stronger day? Um, we know there's gonna be triggers. We know that if, um, you know, if the power goes out or maybe if it's, a, if it's a big storm, we know if it's gonna start thundering, we're gonna get a little stressed, but what can we do about it? So that we don't, again, fall backwards. Okay, I can do this, whether it's breathing or again, relating it back to the horse is going, you know, honey gets, honey gets pretty anxious. What do we do to help calm her down? Do you think those same strategies work with you? Um, so we practice different stuff like that. So yeah, so like I say, I don't like to label. Right. Um, <laughs> the difference between working with our kids and adults. So kids come in super open-minded. Um, I will give them a task and I might just say one rule. I'll say like, you know what? The rule today is nobody on your team, nobody in the arena can step over a rail. And they go, oh, okay, I can do this. And then they'll go do a station and they're like, okay, wait, she said don't step over a rail. So they'll do it a different way or they'll change something or they manipulate it or they, you know, they get super creative. And that's what we really like to celebrate. Um, again, you know, this is where we've got mom, dad, whoever's bringing these kids out going, oh, they have, they have, they are, they are. And I'm like, do you not see how amazing this is right now? I gave them one rule, but they're taking it and going 16 different directions with it, all still falling into the same parameters of what our session is looking after for that, like for that day, right? Adults, on the other hand, <laughs> we are so close-minded and we put up our own barriers and we put in new rules that aren't even there and we struggle. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I truly love watching adults do some of these stations. If like, so we'll say the don't step over the rail. Like if I say that's, that's our rule, we're just not going to step over rails today. I love watching because adults will, they'll come to like a, a triangle. So one of this, for example, one of the stations we have is you have to put your horse in a triangle. So with logs, like on the ground, 
um, fence post logs, building a triangle. Horse has to go in a triangle. You have to turn your horse in a 360 and then leave the triangle all without stepping over a rail. Kids the will horse come in. Or, or the, the horse. handler? The horse. So the horse has to get into the triangle without. Horse has, so here's the thing. Kids That's impossible. Come... No. <laughs> <laughs> this, see, where you're setting up barriers right there. You're going, I can't do this. I'll just be the smart ass. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Those are fun to work with too. <laughs> but our kids will come in. They'll look at a station like that. And they're like, oh, that triangle looks really small. Let's make it bigger. So they move stuff. They make it so that it's quickly, um, you know, so that they can quickly be successful. We're going to move the triangle or, you know, that triangle's small. I have Jackson, who's a massive horse. I'm going to go get the small horse because the small horse will fit. So again, different ways to solve these problems. Adults will look at it. The... Sorry, ahead. there's a British game show like that where they give them simple <laughs> instructions. I can't remember what it's called. And like people have to think outside the box. And it's like, yeah. and it's so funny because I wish I could remember the name of the show. But yeah, same thing. It's like some people will just like think outside the box and oh, they, they didn't say I couldn't move this. They just said right? you couldn't step over that. And yeah. then, yeah, people, yeah, either give up or they, or it's a super right. simple task, actually, you know, when, once you go, oh, 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 yeah. Um, hmm. Adults, adults with the triangle, um, just kind of going back to this one example, mm -hmm. they will stand there and they will like literally, I've had, you know, folks come out and you just watch them and they'll just stand and like, I can't do this. She said she can't step over a rail. She said she can't move a rail. And she said, she said, she said, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa what did I say? And they're like, well, we can't step over a rail. And I was like, yeah. And? <laughs> well, we can't step over a rail. And that means he can't do this. And he's too big. And, and as adults, we, we just kind of put in all of these extra pieces that aren't From even society there. or from belief know. systems that we just somehow um, manifested somewhere? I'm going to say maybe all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, the why behind it, it's like, I don't know why we do it. When I did my training, like I say, this is going eight years back now. I was no different. Um, it wasn't the triangle station we did. It was a, it was a different station. We had two ropes on the horse, but again, you couldn't step over the rails. And I had a short rope. My partner had a super long rope and he can't pull it like, you know, I'd be like stretched right out. And I'm like, no, I can't step over a rail. And like, that's all you had focused in your head was don't step over that rail, that one rule, but yet not, you know, with it enough to be like, Hey, George, can you uh, pay attention to me? Because I'm falling and really struggling here. So I need some help. Quit pulling me. Um, you know, not using my voice, not, I, I struggled. Hmm. I was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to break these rules. I am really good with horses. I know what I'm doing. Meanwhile, I'm stretched out like a bloody slinky. <laughs> so I wouldn't step over a rail. Hmm. And all it was, was that simple thing of saying, Hey, you have a long rope. I have a short rope. Can you um, let me have the lead so that I can be in control without falling. And you've got the long rope. So you won't fall. Mm -hmm. uh, voice, mm -hmm. uh, the communication piece. Um, so it's really, so some of it has nothing to do with a horse per no. se. It's just no. troubleshooting and communicating and teamwork and thinking outside the box. And there just happens to be yes, a horse sir. there. Just happens to be a horse there. <laughs> Is there some exercises so, that are like horse spe specific? So all of the, I'm going to say yes, because everything okay. we do does have the horse involved in one manner or another. Right. Um, what I find with the horse is they really kind of, they offer that support, but they also offer a lot of those lessons. Um, <laughs> this is going back to actually, I'm thinking of a family right now that I worked with quite a few years ago. Um, I want father, names. daughter team. What's that? I want names. I can't give you no, names. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call them Pete and Susie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so father-daughter team comes out 
And they had done, I believe they did six, seven, eight sessions with us just with what the time frame we had. And so dad comes out and he's really like, no, 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 I have to do. And, you know, again, very protective of his little girl, not letting her have that opportunity to explore and see what she is capable of. Mm. Um, so this comes out now, dad comes out and again, there's, there's just a, an attitude. There's a con like, I don't want to say confidence, but arrogance. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, well, I'm going to do this. And, ha, ha, ha. and you're kind of like, no, you're not. But I mean, you, you go ahead and you try, <laughs> um, not necessarily even doing any of the stations or anything we had set out, but he was trying his damnedest to get and again, I think it was it was either Prince or Stormy, but trying to get this horse to move. And he's again the attitude, right? The the, the arrogance coming out. And this horse just stood there and he gave him a look. Dad dropped the lines. He gave it over to his little girl. He walked over to me and he goes, You know, stuff. Um, I think I get it. I was like, okay, fill me in now. He goes, I think that horse just told me to fuck off. And I'm like, I think so too. <laughs> but if I would have told you that, you would have left. And you would have had your guard up and you would have been fighting me. But because it came from the horse, there was an instant shift in approach. There was an instant shift in attitude. And all of a sudden, we've got, you know, big macho dad coming out going, you know what? I'm going to let my little girl do this. And I'm going to let her take the lead and support her where she needs the support. Hmm. Um, and it was it was like this most beautiful shift that just happened in that family unit. So it shed a light with a very yeah. non-threatening light, as yes. opposed to if it was someone else saying, you're such an asshole. It was right. a horse just looking at him. And so then it shed a light and he became yeah. more self-aware. And and that's, that's cool. the beautiful piece with the horses is they tell you that without actually saying it. Um, And that's, you know, again, you and me could be talking right here and I could say, well, I think you are blah, blah, blah. And you're going to be like, man, she is not a nice person. And we go separate ways. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But the horse can say the same thing. And you're like, oh, I get it. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's a me thing. Or so we're a lot as I think as people, we're a lot more receptive for that self-awareness when it comes from the animals a horsey a horsey yeah <laughs> has, has anyone ever like like i'm assuming it, it doesn't work for everyone so people just come up and be like your horse is broken <laughs> those people are the ones that i'm like i'll see you next week and they're like okay <laughs> <laughs> it just it just takes longer <laughs> Um, uh, and you know, it's funny because even when people kind of have that feeling like, no, you're, this isn't working. This is dumb. This is whatever it is. Um, I often feel those are the initial reactions of, again, I don't want to put that wall down. I do not want to be even the slightest bit vulnerable with anything because I'm big, I'm strong. I know what's good for me. But the reality is it's like, well, you're big, you're strong, you know what's good for you, but mm-hmm. is it really good for you? Mm-hmm. What else could we do that could um, support you in whatever that is that, you know, has you feeling this is good for me? Are those relationships you have, are those actual, are those real relationships? Are those real friends or are those people that are using you and you think they're a friend? Um, so a lot of times folks that come out, um, and I see it a little more so uh, with our teenagers, um, because again, we're kind of in a, we're in a very vulnerable stage of growth. We're, we're leaving that childhood behind. We're wanting to be an adult, but we're all confused in that in-between stage. I'm still um, there. I'm I, 45. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> Some of us, it just takes a little longer. You know? <laughs> but, but we have that guard up and, you know, it does like, we could say, um, I'm going to pick on skydiving, for example. I'm terrified of heights. Like the the Ferris wheel at the fair, I don't do because it scares the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go to skydiving. I'm going to say skydiving is stupid. Who would ever do such a thing? That's crazy talk. The only reason I'm saying it is because I'm scared of it. 
you know, it's, it's just because I've never allowed myself to, um, I don't want to say experience for me. I'm going to say, I don't think I'll ever skydive, but if I can get on a Ferris wheel, that's a good start. Would you skydive with a horse? No. <laughs> oh, the horse wouldn't even <laughs> coax you. I, that's, that's like a hard no, a fast no, like we ain't doing this. Um, <laughs> but that's a, like, it, it's based out of fear. Um, you know, the Ferris wheel, for example, I, I do do the Ferris wheel with my kids, like, but it is hard. I'm up there and I'm like, damn, you're yelling at them going, don't you dare rock this thing. And it's like white knuckled. I'm not sure if I actually breathe through this whole experience. That's, and that's you, you are my wife. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode of Bunny Hugs and Mental Health is brought to you by Co-op. I've been a member of my local co-op, Sherwood Co-op, for, oh, about 25 years, I think. My co-op is one of more than 150 local independent cooperative associations in more than 600 communities across Western Canada. Co-op is a different kind of business. It's not just a gas bar or a grocery store, although co-op is those things too. At its core, co-op is a group of people working together to help their neighbors and build their community. Co-op members are owners and success is shared with everyone. Your co-op doesn't benefit one person or one corporation. Your co-op was built for everyone. Your co-op was built for your community. Learn more about co-op and find a location near you at co-op.crs. Some places just aren't worth the trip, but Indian Head Chrysler definitely is. Indian Head Chrysler can order directly from the factory, saving you thousands of dollars. And if you buy a new or used retail vehicle from Indian Head Chrysler, you'll be entered to win $30,000 at the end of this year. They'll even deliver your purchased vehicle directly to your house, business, or wherever you are. So you should make the trip to Indian Head Chrysler. Visit ihchrysler.ca. Small town service, big city selection. Be sure to get tickets. For Let's Get Loud 2023, Thursday, October 12th. Join us for an evening to bring awareness to mental health and addictions while bringing the community of Regina together. Speakers that night include Alana Boyle, Jess Tattoo, and Dr. Jody Carrington. Just go to eventbrite.ca and search Let's Get Loud 2023. So so do you know why you're scared of heights? Are some people just, it's just in their DNA? It's... Um, I could take it right back to saying, you know what, maybe it's just one of those anxieties. Yeah. How do you deal with it? Um, I you know, label. Do you avoid it? Do you, I ain't labeling nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I understand the purpose of it, but I really believe people get labeled with so many different things that the label itself can become extremely overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And then you start to believe that. And uh, we'll, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of one here, but, um, well, ADHD. Okay. You know, yeah, you brought it up. That's why I'm, I'm going to pick on it a little bit. Um, you're going to pick on me. I'm going to pick on you just a little bit, but what happens is again, when we get labeled, you know, everybody's going to say, Hey, you're ADHD, you have ADHD. And then all we start hearing is I must be ADHD. I am ADHD. I'm the textbook definition of ADHD. And we forget what we're truly capable of. Um, ADHD might be a part of who we are, but don't let it define what we can do. So that's where I like to say, get rid of the labels because, you know, the, the labels people start need to start having are, you know, you're, you're a phenomenal person. You mm-hmm. are a kind hearted soul. You are um, really creative. Those are the labels. You're very creative, um, but you know what? Yeah, we we struggle with some cognitive stuff, but hey, you are super creative. Mm-hmm. So let's remember that piece. Yeah, because no, yeah. You I know, definitely do. Yeah, it, it's almost like I need that label to explain it to other people. Well, like, and that's uh, yeah. Yeah, like whether they're employers or mm-hmm. uh, if you're going to school, then you have to let your. Yeah whatever knows that you have the the proper supports. Cause if you just say, Oh, yeah. I don't get that. They're like, Meh. sucks well, to be bad. you. <laughs> yeah. Which happens anyway, even with the label sometimes. It does. Um, and that's the thing, like I say, I, it's, it's not that I'm, you know, I, I'm, it's not that I'm not 
understanding or getting the whole mm -hmm. idea behind labels. It's just, I feel a lot of times we always get them and then they, a lot of them have a negative connotation behind them. And it's like, you know what, again, let's, let's flip it. Let's turn it into the positive. I, I totally get that. Take too. it from, take it from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Some people so, do uh, like, I know some people that have like 10 diagnoses of things. Right? It's like, just sounds like you yeah. need help is what it sounds like to me, but yeah, for real. Um, and so, you know, even in that regard, like, you know, some of these, some of these kids that are coming out, they are, they're coming out and they've got that whole book of diagnosis and labels and, you know, all of these things like, and it, it comes across as like, this is what's wrong with my child. And you're like, no, no, the no, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to show you why your child is truly a remarkable person. Hmm. And we're going to do it you know, again, with the horses, you're going to see how well they do problem solve, how well they do, um, you know, work as a team or work independently or yeah, hmm. use their words. Have, have you seen kids who are, are working through their stuff with the horses and with your yeah. program and the parents are there watching or whatever, but a huge part of the kid's anxiety and problem is the parent. And it's <laughs> then hard for them because you know the the whole problem is just right over there watching me and it's like yeah. is there a wall or how, what what happens in that situation um i usually really encourage the parent the caregiver to join us oh yes um so again like i say my i do focus a lot with our kiddos um if the adults and i'm i'm just going to say adult because we've got yeah. parents grandparents we've got Everybody caregivers. and anybody, yeah. caregivers, yeah. whoever it is bringing these kids out. Um, so yeah, the kiddos are coming for, again, there's, there's something going on. Hey, can you, can you help us? Absolutely. But again, you know, come on, mom, I, mom, I need you out here because what's like, like kind of said, you know, some of those anxieties or those stressors are kind of like, <gasps> Mom's watching, dad's watching, I I need to be perfect. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, we kind of have that break or that, you know, the meltdown. And it's like, perfect, we're crying. Now, how are we going to deal with this? Um, and that's where, you know, I like to bring in the, the caregiver going, okay, is this common at home? Is this common when, you know, you guys are out traveling, shopping, school? And it's like, yeah, I says, okay. How can we work through this? Oh, maybe I should stop telling them to work harder at getting your horse to step on the glove. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's really cool. Like, I really do enjoy bringing the caregivers into the sessions with us. Um, whether or not they are maybe a, a trigger or that, you know, maybe they are that anxiety push. Maybe they're just, they're going, I don't know how to help this kid. We fight, we laugh, we, I, I don't know. Um, so then it, it kind of builds that relationship between child and adult. And then when they go home, this is where I say, I'm like, I get to see you for like an hour a week, mm -hmm. if I'm lucky, right? We can get lots done in an hour, but there's going to be now seven more days of homework that you guys have to work on. Might not be stuff that happens today. It might be, you know, three days later where mom's like, oh, hey, do you remember when we, when Prince was acting like this? You know, you're, you're kind of acting like Prince and it's frustrating me. Boom. We have conversation. Boom. There's, you know, something now starts happening on the home front because they have that commonality. They mm -hmm. were both there with that horse. They both seen, you know, what their actions were causing or not causing. And they're able to then further have those conversations. Boom. Conversation. Yeah. Boom. Communication. <laughs> Let's talk it out. But <laughs> our, our, our adults brains as, or their behaviors. Well, you kind of suggested earlier, they, it's a little harder. I for think so. It. so. So even when they go home, do you think that the adult slips into old mm -hmm. patterns, faster than the, I the child it's a it's, it's a hard one um the only way i can i think i can answer that would be my own personal experience with it um 
when I, so again, this is going back like that eight years when um, I did my EAL program. So with the curriculum that I use and whatnot, but I would do a session or, you know, be a participant. So I'm going in as an adult participant doing this program and it would be like four days later. And I'm like, oh, that's what that meant. And, you know, it would hit me then. And then it's like, okay, change, like smarten up, change your attitude. You know what? This is how we're moving forward. But some of the things would hit me later. Some of them would hit right in that moment. And like behaviors or, you know, habits, whatever it is, again, the only way it's going to change is if you want it to change. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Like, you know, you, you really do have to put in that work. So, yeah. Well, I mean, that's a fair answer, right? It depends. Like, I, yeah. It, it's, it's different it, for everybody, right? It's, it is. Um, I, so, I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Because some people, like, I know, shit, I'm, like, hyper self-aware of every emotion, every behavior I'm having, <laughs> especially after, like, seeing a therapist or something. Yeah, yeah. it's, like, days yeah. later, it's, like, uh, is this me? Is it them? What's going on? And then, right. uh, and other people, they just, yeah, maybe think about it beyond that hour they're with you. And you know what, if that's, and that's, that's the thing, like, you know, we might only have that one hour where we are thinking about, um, again, whatever it is going on inside, maybe, uh, I'm going to say, we'll say respect. I'm just Mm. picking a word here. Um, you know, maybe for an hour, we're like, you know what, we're going to work on respect. I'm going to work on respecting my own boundaries. And that might be the only hour in that week that you practice that. But I say, you know what, at least you're doing it for that hour. Mm-hmm. You're not completely, you know, maybe we're not ready to respect our ba- our own personal boundaries. Um, you know, outside of therapy, for example, we might not be there yet. We might get there. Mm-hmm. We might start realizing, we'll say six weeks later or six sessions later, go. And, you know, that's where we come back going, Hey, I said, no, I was not going to go to this function again, you know, respecting your own boundaries. I was tired. I didn't want to go, but I always go because people expect me to be there or, you know, so it's, it's the little changes. Hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking more with people that may be the problem to the child. (laughs) They might not get it right away that they might not. Maybe it's my behavior that's causing my child's behavior. And, but, but, but again, it's like, even if it's one hour a week that, the light yeah. to shed on it a bit more than yeah that's better than never and that's kind of how i see it too um you know these these kids that come out i don't know what happens when they leave the bar like the arena I, I i don't um i'll see them like i say i'll see them the next week same time same with the parent it's like again i i don't know what you guys are i don't i don't know what your reality is um we have some pretty intense conversations sometimes with, you know, parents and caregivers where it's like, yeah, okay, good. I'm glad you're bringing this up and I'm glad you are the one who is starting to acknowledge this. You know, uh, a common one is yelling. Um, Lots of, lots of people yell at their kids. I yell at my kids. And, you know, it's things like that where we'll have those conversations going, well, how often am I yelling at my kid? Am I yelling so much that this is why, you know, my kiddo is, you know, in this state of constant anxiety because they're waiting for mom to bark orders at them? Or, you know, it's it's crazy. I have great mommy issues. (laughs) (laughs) Self-realization here. (laughs) Now I'm the therapist. Right? (laughs) Sounds crazy, but I get a lot out of these sessions for myself. (laughs) Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Um, So, so, I mean, you were a therapist first, and then you just introduced the horses and learned how how to... No, no? you were a horse person first, then a therapist. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. But you are a therapist. It's not like you just... Yes. Like, when people do have actual traumas and things, like, you have the training to... Yes. To do to help them through it. It's not just, yes. uh, okay, well just make okay, the horse step on a horse. glove. Yeah. 
Um, and that, so, and that's the piece too, like the whole therapy piece behind it. Um, part of my push, like even with the documentary or with the work I do is I always say there's so much more to therapy than talk. Yeah. Um, we do some sessions where we will literally stand, brush the horse because you, you know, I've had kids come out, I'm going to say older kids, like that 12 to 14 ish. Um, and they're just complete, like, you can just see they are completely drained of all life that they have. Mm. And you're like, man, you guys, you got something going on, don't you? And they're like, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I was like, that's cool. Let's go get a horse. And we do, we'll, we'll go get a horse. And I'll say, you know what? Let's just brush. Let's just hang out. So we'll be, you know, again, just again, bringing that horse in, we might brush for half an hour. And then finally, it's like, you know, my best friend is doing bad stuff. Boom, there's the conversation piece. Boom, okay. conversation. Then we, then we get into it. Um, but it really is a matter of, you know, when you're ready to talk about it, I'm here, we talk. Um, but sometimes like I've had sessions where it's been, you know, damn near 60 minutes of silence. Mm -hmm. And I think those are harder for me because I love talking. I'm like, hey, so what do you think about this? What are your thoughts on that? And they're just like. So then you yell then, at them. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you try to light a little fire underneath and be like, hey, come on, guys, let's go. Like, oh, let's have <laughs> this energy up. But but that's the thing. You know, some of those sessions, just being in the quiet and just having that you know, 40, 60 minutes just to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll leave and you're kind of, you sit there and you're like, I don't know if that was effective or not, but then you see them a week later and they'll bring it up going, you know, last week was really good. Like it, I needed that. And you're like, oh, good, good. I'm doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I get paid either way. So whatever kid. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is, it's like I say, we've had, you know, we, I do deal with a lot of, um, kids who do have traumas yeah, all over imagine. the place. Oh, it's, God. um, definitely some of my favorite kids to work with. I had one you like the, girl. You like the challenge, eh? I do. Um, but it, it's also something that I think keeps me humble in a sense, where it's just like, Damn, that's, you know, this is what you're bringing into it. And no, maybe my, my life isn't that bad hmm. or, you know, cause again, you see these, these little, these little kids, you know, and like they could 16. And again, you're still like, no, you're still a little kid. You, you shouldn't be experiencing all these things you're telling me that, you, you know, that's going on. Like what the hell? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that's the piece that for me, not that I enjoy the story, but it, it really brings me back into kind of center gravity. It's like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, you know, yeah. that maybe just, yeah, it's, it's hard. And then you see these kids coming out and you're just like, oh, mommy issues. I need to hug you. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> I worked in a, in, in addictions for a little while and right. in the place where I got sober myself actually. And uh, yeah, it is, it is. I mean, people have horrendous stories. Like yeah. you think you heard the worst possible thing. And then the next person comes in and it's like, Oh my God. And then to see them like 28 days later, just there's a light in their eye again. There's a, you know, there's a twinkle in their eye again and stuff. Yeah. And again, you don't know beyond once they leave what, what happens, but you, even hope. just knowing that they were somewhere safe for 28 days was, is, yeah. is even nice. And I think, you know, you say the twinkle in the eye and that's the piece that I, I strive for that. Um, you know, these, again, like these families are coming in and like, it's almost like we're starting with these families where they're like little whipped puppy dogs. You mm -hmm. know, that dog's been bad. You whip them, you tie them to a chain and you leave them out in the rain. Bad dog we kind of, you know, we can kind of envision like vision that, right. This is the same thing that these families are coming out with. This is what we're kind of starting with is that same, that same energy. And you're like, man, but then whether it's session one or session 10 or wherever it is, 
all of a sudden you start seeing that kid smile and you're just like, there it is. I knew you could smile, but (laughs) that, that smile, you know, that's where it's like, I wonder when the last time was that you genuinely smiled or when you genuinely felt proud of something. And, you know, that's, again, you you see it in that body language, you see that, that sparkle come back into them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, yeah, this, this is good. This, this is, this is what we're working for. Um, Again, what happens afterwards, you know, it's, it's kind of like you mentioned too, after that 28 days, it's like, I don't know. But at the same time, it's like, I do know that there is still some spark left in this person. And it's, we can, we can work with that. Nice. Yeah. So, what, so what do you think Saskatchewan doesn't have as much horse th- or a- a- equine therapy? Yeah. So it, it, it's kind of like a on the fence answer. Um, so when I started, we, I did equine assisted learning. Hmm. Um, it's a fabulous program um, up in Prince Albert, their Carche farms. They, they built a phenomenal program. This is where, you know, this 12 week or this 12 session curriculum comes from. It's, it is a research based program, um, but it's learning and there's no therapy whatsoever connected to it. It's a case of where we bring our, you know, a group of kids in and you're like, okay, do these sessions. I want you to work really hard on getting your horse to step on the glove. And then you go home. We're not getting into, you know, um, Okay, so it's it's really hard for you to step on that glove. What's going on? Why is it hard? What's what's holding you back? We don't have those conversations when we're doing the equine assisted learning piece. Mm. Um, so that being said, there are quite a few um, EAL equine equine assisted learning facilitators in our province um, running fantastic programs, but it's not the therapy equine assisted psychotherapy. There's only maybe a handful of us in the province doing it because it's extra school. Um, you know, like I, you are either registered psychology, you're part of um, the Canadian Counseling Association. I can never remember my acronyms. And it's like, <laughs> you have all these memberships to all these really, you know, dignified boards and whatnot um, <laughs> saying that you kind of know a little bit of something. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how else to explain it. Um, We recognize she knows something. Right. Here's a number. (laughs) (laughs) Here's her registration. (laughs) Um, So part of it is it is having that therapy, counseling, psychology background. Mm. There's a lot of psychology therapy people in our province Um, Lots of talk therapy, lots of group therapy, lots of, you know, different counseling facilities. But it gets hard when you say all of a sudden we're bringing a horse in because to do that, well, now you need a horse. Now you need a facility. Now you need horse experience. Now you need, and it's, it's a lot, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people too, I've talked to, like even in the counseling end of things are like, oh, that'd be so great to run a program like that. I was like, it is, I'm exhausted, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the exhausting piece really is, it's not so much the families per se, but it's the prep. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's the fact that we've got, you know, you, you put out for indoor facilities. We're in Saskatchewan. It's cold. It's windy. I'd say it's raining, but we haven't seen rain in forever. Uh, but the weather is typically very unpredictable. So you need to be inside. Otherwise, you can't run a business based mm-hmm. on a forecast that is all over the place. Um, so, again, it's it's just having that facility. How, how many There's horses lots... do you have? Sorry. No, that's okay. Um in the program, I usually rotate in and out about eight different ones. Okay. Um, I well, that's don't... a lot of mouths to feed and a lot of poop to clean. Yes, sir. So I guess that's <laughs> and, why it's not very many people yeah, doing and, it. Well, and that's the thing. Um, another piece, too, that I kind of feel is a lot of people have horses, but they don't have that therapy background. Right. Or it's like, I have a horse, I know how to ride, I know how to, you know, I, I'm a coach, I'm showing whatever it is, 
but that's kind of where it stops. I have a beautiful facility, but I don't want to do therapy. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, that's fair. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's like me saying I have an accountant because I hate doing my books. Man, that's his I job. That. He, loves, he loves doing books. I don't. Um, <laughs> it's no different in, I'm going to say the horse and psychology world is there's a lot of great arenas, but as soon as you start talking therapy, they're like, um, well, and not so much therapy itself, but some of the nitty gritty behind the scenes stuff. It's like, oh, okay, I, I, I don't want to do that. Hmm. But I know the horses provide a lot of support, you know, for whatever reason, whatever's going on. I just don't want to get into it. Or, you know, having that ability or even the, the know-how when, when you have a family, a kid, an adult, whoever, come and, like, disclose some heavy shit. And you're like, okay, so do we cry together? Or, uh, like, that's a lot. So now they're going home. You know, they leave going, yeah, I, you know, I'm glad I got that out there. And I'm like, good. I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better than when you first started. But then, you know, from that therapy psychology standpoint, you're like, okay, shit. Now I got to deal with all of this in here because it's in me now. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. you, you hear some stuff and you're like, holy man, like this, it's a lot. And then, you know, you reflect as well going, and they're living that. Or they've right. lived that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's a, like I say, it, I think it's um, the demand on bringing it all together. There's a lot behind it. Well, maybe I did... therapists like in the city in an office somewhere, they could just wear a horse costume. <laughs> right. <laughs> or have a, <laughs> someone else come in in a horse costume. That's where my brain went. It's like there. <laughs> I mean, best of so both worlds. Definitely, I I really believe it would lighten the mood a little bit. <laughs> I also think that you might be able to connect with some of your kids a little quicker <laughs> versus standard talk therapy. Um, and I, I shouldn't say that like that because talk therapy has its place. Um, yeah, yeah. Every you know, everybody well, connects with a different type of right. therapy. That's right. What what um, I love about you you is like it's so you you were the therapist. So I let yeah. everybody connects with a therapist or, you know, but you also have different horses. So you can actually pick yeah. and choose. Okay. I think this kid will be good with this horse because of these yep. challenges. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not just, but like I'm the therapist and we don't necessarily have to be a hundred percent gelling because it's more the horse yeah. that's bringing this stuff yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and that's, you know, it, I kind of feel like my role when we start programs, Um, is more of that middle person. I'm going to make sure that you are safe and I'm going to make sure that you and, um, you know, Jackson or Red or whoever it is, if that's the horse you want to work with, I'm going to make sure that you feel comfortable because they're big animals. So we maybe just do that for the first couple sessions. And then it falls into, um, I I really like this a lot more so with kind of those, like the 12, 13, 14 year olds, age group um because it's exciting i get to see a horse this is great i am not going to therapy therapy is stupid ah (laughs) but i get to see a horse so and that's how we start i'm like you know what yeah like i just want to make sure you are comfortable we're gonna go do some stations we're gonna we're just gonna hang out Mm -hmm. and then you know they come back for session three and they're like man is red in yeah red's here i know you and him kind of totally clicked on day one and so, of course, he's going to be back, but then that's where I start kind of pushing a little bit. And I'm like, so, why are you here? Or, you know, have you done therapy in the past? What's worked? What hasn't worked? Boom, conversation. Conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, this segment is called That Some Bunny Special. It's a segment where we chat about who cooperated in your mental health journey and helped fill your emotional tank, brought to you by Co-op. So <laughs> they are a sponsor of this. Do you have a Very co-op cool. number? Uh, I do. Guaranteed. I knew you had one. I've hey. got two of them, actually. Personal and business? Uh, no, Yorkton oh. and Melville. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. 
uh, so so yeah. So with this segment, we just talk about in, in your life, in your journey, who who has been a, a big uh, support or inspiration, and it could be, it oh. could be a horse even. So I, it could be a horse, but it's not. Um, I am definitely going to do a huge shout out to Cindy Gray. Uh, she's uh, art therapist, or she was art therapist in based out of Yorkton. The reason I am doing a shout out for Cindy is when I was dabbling in the whole idea of chasing after my master's in counseling psychology. Uh, that's when we, Cindy and I kind of met through a trade show and we said, well, we'll do a service for service. I want to learn what you're doing. You come learn what I'm doing. It worked out great. I went. So in the meantime, I had applied um, for this master's in counseling psychology program through Athabasca. I got accepted, but you had to accept the acceptance. And mm. in doing that, you have to give them your credit card. And okay, for you to accept this letter or accept this offer, it's going to cost you right off the bat, like 200 bucks, mm -hmm. plus your classes, plus your schooling, plus your time, plus all of these things, right? So I go meet Cindy at her studio and she says, Kate, well, we're going to do a session. And no, me, I've never done anything like that before. I I went in like stressed. I'm damn near shaking. I'm like, I don't know what this woman's all about. I don't know what she's going to do to me. This is really freaking weird. And she gives me a paintbrush, some paper on the wall, and she says, paint. And she walked away. And I was kind of like, the hell? Okay. So I started painting. Um, and it, I just did a bunch of um, like crisscross, uh, like plaid lines up and down, back and forth. And after about 20 minutes, she comes, kind of comes back and she says, uh, I was like, okay, I, I think I'm done. I, I, I got nothing. And she goes, she looks at the painting. She goes, what are you hiding from? I was like, huh? What do you mean? What am I hiding from? She's like, well, what's the safety net for? What are you scared of? I'm like, uh, uh, I, huh? Like really dumbfounded that she's even asking these questions. Um, but it led into a conversation around this whole um, school. And I says, well, I don't know. Like I got accepted, but I don't know if I want to do it. Should I do it? Don't I do it? It's going to be a lot of money. Everybody's, you know, in like my internal family and whatnot. They're like, well, why would you do it? Because aren't you running a business already? And isn't that enough? So it's mm -hmm. like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, do I do it? And uh, I say this all the time and she knows I say this, but she looked at me and she's like, you know, you would be one of the most stupidest people if you didn't do it. She says, you go home and you accept that letter and you make it happen because the world needs more of this. Hmm. And I looked at her, honestly, I looked at her and I was like, okay. I left her studio. I went, went home, logged on to emails or wherever these were coming from. And I said, here's my credit card. I hit send, hit submit. And then I went, Oh dear God, what did I sign up for? Cause now there's an email coming going orientation starts next week. And I'm like, Oh dear Lord. Um, so a lot of anxiety brought on from just that conversation, but because of that conversation, because of Cindy, you know, I always say Cindy was the one who kicked me in the ass and said, do it. Hmm. Because of that, I am where I am today. Usually people just say like, and my mom, and that's no, it. So no, I love this that is a, a story. This is a Cindy, this is a Cindy story. Oh, I'm all stories. <laughs> like, I am not a short-winded person. <laughs> Would you go skydiving with her? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> her and a horse. Still no. Thank you for all your incredible work, Stephanie. Uh, it's amazing. And I, I'm sure you are probably a lot of kids' favorite adult, not just because you help them, but also because you have horsies. Be sure to check out the short documentary about Stephanie. I will put the link to that in the show notes, so you can also check that out. Now for the trivia question, this is going to be an easy one. Name one, any one of Stephanie's horses. She mentioned, oh, I can think of at least three different names she gave. Uh, so, yeah, that's, it's that easy. Name one of Stephanie's horses. Email that to bunnyhugspodcast at gmail.com and you will be entered to win a $25 gift card from Co-op. Don't miss next week's episode with Angela from The Rehearsal. 
Thank you for listening. Remember to make your beds and take your meds. Bye. Bye.